Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace, reporting from the Zinc Bar as part of the Vandal Jam, presented by Van Dorn Instruments. Tonight, blessing the band stage is a dynamic saxophonist as well as composer J.D. Allen. As you might know, four years ago, I profiled and introduced this brother who hails from Detroit, Michigan. Lately, he just released this brand new recording, Americana, which really focuses on the importance of blues and how it relates to jazz as well as the culture. Tonight I had a chance to sit down to break bread about his brand new recording, his reflections on what blues means to jazz and means to him, as well as we reflect on how the art as well as the music is really a myriad and a reflection of the black experience. J.D. Allen, the last time we broke bread, it was cold, oh, yeah. Central Park. I mean, we were huddled up, but now it's the summertime, you're back. And I just want to congratulate you on Americana. And speaking to you earlier, you know, just breaking the ice, mm -hmm. this record is very, very important, not only to the vernacular of jazz music, but the byproduct of jazz, which is the blues. Uh, well, hey, you know, I I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to be a spoke within the wheel. That's all it is. You know, it's not, um, it was, just, as I was telling you, it was totally selfish on my part, wanting to get better and realizing that um, the blues can help you accomplish that, you know, learning to find the cry, 
it's in the blues. And everything you play should be the blues. You know what I mean? That's the human element of music, and that's the blues. That, that, that's all it was about. You know, my, some of my favorite musicians, heroes, they all had to deal with it. And, and if you're a student of the music, once you realize that, you, you, you have to face that challenge. It wasn't anything deep and wonderful other than wanting to get better, man. That's it. You know, one of the things about the blues is, one, it's very, very naked. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very gritty and right to the point. And being that, it comes from the origins in the Mississippi Delta. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's true. That, that The particular blues that we play here, yes, it does come from the Delta. But there's blues all over the world, you know. Prokofiev in Russia, he had a blues and a sense of emotion. When you get into the spirit of the blues, you know, you know, Debussy, I hear the blues in that. You know, French, great French classical composer. I hear the blues in Johnny Cash. You know, I hear the blues in Bob Dylan. I hear the blues. It's, it's all around us. You know, maybe we gave it a name, the blues, but it's a spirit, you know, and it's a spirit that I think uh, it's important to identify and, and search for within your music. And that, that's what it is for me, anyway, you know. Your father is from the Mississippi Delta, which... Oh, my grandfather. Your grandfather, yeah. your grandfather. Sunflower County, Mississippi, yeah. Now, I have some, some, some fond memories. I used to be a reporter for Mississippi Public Radio oh, wow, down there. Okay. So I did get to see Ed Abina. I got to experience a lot of Greenwood and Greenville and Money, Mississippi, that area. Yeah. And the tremendous spirit of the musicians that came out of there is just ridiculous. Well, you know, it's... it's uh. I think growing up in Detroit, you know, a lot of our family are from the South, you know, Mississippi, Virginia, you know, Arkansas. And the thing was to try to not to be country. And I used to try to get away from that, you know, and not because I didn't think it was intelligent. It's just, it's just that I thought that I would be judged. So even coming to New York, people used to say, oh, you sound like you're from the South. And I used to say, oh, man, I don't want to sound like that, you know. But now I, I embrace that, you know. I, I, I embrace my my roots, and 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 the stories that I heard growing up before my grandfather and his relatives came to Detroit, you know. As it, I, I wear those stories as a badge of courage, just just like playing the blues, I wear as a badge of courage, something that that's totally American, you know. And I'm proud of that, you know. So yeah, there's some grit in there. There's love in there. There's comedy. There's all types of things, you know. It's life. The blues is life, you know good or bad. You know, there have been some great, great jazz recordings by some of our elder statesmen and icons who really paid homage to the blues. We had Coltrane mm -hmm. to do a recording of blues, and you're in that same space right oh. now. <laughs> well, I mean, because this really is, I mean, from the album cover to just the songs on here, I mean, on this record, you, you do two Delta standards. You do Another Man Done Gone, which was done by Vera Hall, and uh -huh. then you do If You're Lonesome, Then You're Not Alone, which was that's by... Actually, that's actually by Bill McHenry, which right. is a great uh, tenor saxophonist. Uh, and, and, um, I, and I chose that song because that, to me, okay, it wasn't a blues form, but it, the melody in my mind's eye had the spirit of it, the spirit of longing. You know, that, that's why I fell in love with that melody. And I highly suggest anyone to hear his version of it you know, we have different versions, and he was he was kind enough to let me uh, perform it. You know, but that's one of my favorites. It was either that song, or uh, a Hank Williams tune. I was I, had, I was I was battling between those two those two songs. Uh, you know, either Hank Williams or Bill McHenry, and I chose Bill McHenry this particular time. You know, because Bill, you know, Hank Hank Williams had the blues too. You know, his life damn sure was the blues. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs>
let's talk about some of the social issues of this record. Okay. There is a song entitled Bigger Thomas, and if anybody in America has not read Native Son by mm -hmm. Richard Wright, I don't want to be mean, but something is definitely wrong with you. <laughs> now, and, and, and at a time, because the last eight years we've been in the era of Obama, and we've been dealing with racial issues on a much grander scale. And Bigger Thomas is really a figure of the African-American male that has been dis disenfranchised mm -hmm. and hasn't been exposed to the other side or outside of the box. And the man suffered a lot of issues to the point where he murdered mm -hmm. someone. And I want to ask you, you know, musically and being part of the jazz community and being part of the experience, how has the music reflected of the times and especially of Bigger Thomas now? <laughs> wow, you, you were right about the question. <laughs> okay. I got to show myself, my real self. No. <laughs> um, in, my, in my opinion, this is nothing new that's going on. And it's, it's not only our story, it's the world's story. I like to think of it like that, you know, like, you know, get into to writers such as Rich, writers such as Richard Wright and Ralph Ellison, particularly Richard Wright. There's a there's a there's a short paper I read called The Blueprint of the Negro that he wrote, and he was talking about our writing or our art should have a perspective of a human element versus just a black element, which I highly respect. You know, I want to be able to look at something and just look at it and say, you know what, that, that's a great piece of art. That art has meaning, you know. And then if I see the political ramifications behind it or, 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 or whatever that they're trying to, I, I, first I want to recognize it for its craft, craftsmanship. And I think Richard Wright and Ralph Ellison were about that, telling a story that could work in Ireland because they, they had their situation over there or the Aborigines in, 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 in Australia, because they have their situation over there. Or the Arabs in France, in the suburbs, they have their situation. You know, stories that just transcends race, timeless stories, you know, that's been going on forever. But what we're going through now, it's, this has always been happening, you know that. I mean, these, these are the stories we heard in barbershops growing up. Boy, you better be cool when you walk down the street. You got to be this way. I, you have to like what uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar said, I wear the mask. mask. That's right. Right? That's right. You got to wear the mask. When you're in the hood, you have a certain way you walk. When you're in other type of suburbs, you have a certain way you walk. It's just, it's just how we have to function in this world. It's nothing new. What's new is just, you know, technology is letting us see things that we've been seeing all along. And it's, it's giving proof to people who probably never believed us. But art, first, in my opinion, should be great or aspire to be great, then if there's any political or ra political ramifications or, or, or issues that you want to get across, let that be secondary. But let your art just be great art, you know. That's where I'm at with it. So you, you take Richard, Rich, Richard's, uh, Richard Wright's, uh, what was the book that had Cross Damon in it? Was that The Inside? Or was the that Insider? The yeah. Or Outside? Was it that? Outside. Inside, outside. outside. Well, another character, Cross Damon, who killed people. Yeah. You notice in that story, he went against the communists, he went against the NAACP, he went against all factions. You know, he didn't tie with anybody. He was self first, you know, and he was dealing with himself and those demons. He didn't align. People were trying to get him, Cross Damon, to align with different characters, but really, he was trying to make his way through the world, and he didn't have a particular allegiance to any damn thing. He was a non-confirmist, you know. Bigger Thomas, you know, in a situation, he's in the city. A another story, another Richard Wright story. You know, what I get from Richard Wright and why I enjoy him and Ralph Ellison in, in, in particular is, you know, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that comes, to, at least to my mind, is not that I'm a black man. It's that I'm a man and I have to deal with what I have to deal with. Right. I have to deal with it before I go to sleep. I look at my life story on the ceiling and I'm figure, trying to figure out how to figure it out, you know. And that's art, you know. That's first. That's what we all have in common. And I think, you know, those authors, Richard Wright and Ralph Ellison, they were about that. If you get a chance, check out The Blueprint of the Negro. That's, 
That's a great one. Another Richard Wright short, short commentary about how we as artists should be in America and what our art represents to America as Americans, as artists, then as black people, you know? That's what I think. That's why I always kind of use little titles. And I'm happy you picked it up. Most people don't pick that up, but that's what that is. Be back on something too about Americana. Mm -hmm. Now I read the article or or the essay by Giovanni Russell Russellio. Oh yeah, about about the Americana. Uh, about the Americana, yeah, yeah, which is a great yeah. I it, it, it. It's a great piece, but I told you something earlier about what has been happening to black culture and and not just black culture but America. It seems like the dumbing down and the unnecessariness of being stupid in this country has made the art form like jazz and the blues take a back seat to what's going on in the world right now. Okay. Well, it's not, like I said, once again, it's nothing new. You know, if you look at, 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 at great figures who did blackface, right? Pig Meat Martin did the black cork you know to us now we would look at that and say man that was that was not happening man that was like bringing down our race but during that time man you know that's how he was making he was actually a millionaire you know he did his thing and he and that's how we were portrayed it's it, what i'm trying to say everything happens in cycles you know this is the cycle that we're in you know and um uh, i read something also it was another i can't recall his name but it was something deep you know, on on the black tip 
Is it that we have a culture or is it a shared experience of tragedy? That's the question. Is it that we have a black culture? Is there a black culture? Or is it just a shared sense of tragedy that we've gone through? Now, now we could talk all night about Richard Wright. We could talk about Ralph Ellison, Amir Baraka. But you know, you got Victor Hugo too, the French cat. Albert Camus, they wrote about things that were going on too. So that's what I'm saying It's like, I think the minute that we, we join the world in a sense of different things going on, different plights going on and come together. And then that's, that would, that, that would make us united as one, you know, a throng of, you know, a throng of millions can be one, you know, that, that's my viewpoint on, on that tip. You know, like I said, man, and I wake up in the morning, the first thing I, I think of is not that, oh, I'm a black man. And you know, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father. I'm a, I'm a husband, uh, you know, I'm a friend or a good friend or bad. Those things come first, you know, that, the, and that's the art, you know, trying to put those emotions into, out the horn or, or, or someone painting or writing, you know, that, that's what it's about for me. That, that's our job, you know, to tell a story. And um, you mentioned that article, uh, Americana article that was talking about, you know, the, the one side of the story, and that article actually in, 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 in inspired me. And it was something in my mind, I wrote it down saying, I want to write something along those lines, you know. And that was a white brother that wrote that article. You know, intelligent people know each other, you know. They, they, they know what's right. That's right. You know, and we can't expect everybody to get it, man, because it's not like that. Everybody that came out of the forest with Moses, they could have been out in 11 days. It took them 40-something years. Everybody ain't going to make it. And that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. I mean, I am. You know, <laughs> we all ain't gonna make it, man. You know, some of us, but not all of us. You know, and I just hope that me and you are one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I aspire to that. You know, you know. You being a successful leader now, you've recorded nine successful recordings now. What are some of the things that now, as a band leader? prepared you to get to this point playing with those those great masters oh wow um i just noticed everyone that i played with were themselves whatever that might be you know of course they had their influences and they were drawing from who they were draw drawing from in terms of influence but you know betty carter mrs carter and and, and abby lincoln mrs lincoln did not sound the same I had an opportunity to sit in with Ab Mrs. Lincoln, Abby Lincoln, and it was a totally different experience than playing with Betty Carter. You know, uh, I've I've played, I've had the ple opportunity, great opportunity to play with Lewis Hayes, which is a totally different experience from playing with Cindy Blackman or with Nard Harper or Ralph Peterson. They all sound different. So I think like you know th those cats were they they were. It was about being an indiv individual, and instilling some of the history in their plan but doing their their stuff on top of that so that's what i got you know I mean, it's like look man you know everybody can't can't be the same type of glitter we all have our own kind of glitter and i'm i'm starting to become more comfortable with what i can do you know and what and what it is that i'm supposed to do versus doing what everybody else does at least that's what i hope you know i feel that i'm feeling more confident maybe maybe because i'm getting older you know I mean, because I mean, see, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. It's crazy because these last three recordings you've put out, mm -hmm. I, I'm just noticing a very, very mature and very focused JD Allen. I mean, on the composing side and also on the performance side. Oh well, I mean, I, I you know, it's interesting. That, interesting that you say that is. Um, because maybe it's, maybe it's the recording process. I, I, the last three or four albums, you know, what, what we do is I bring the material in, material in, and I don't play, I don't do takes. Like I don't do, okay, I have one song, I'm gonna do four takes. I don't do that. I'll make a set li list as if it's a gig, and we play the whole set. We go from tune to tune to tune to tune, and we, we hit it for about an hour. We probably record the record over and over about 200 times, and I go back and listen to all 200 takes, and I get the best situation. So it's a, it's a, it's a live feeling. And I don't tell Rudy or Greg what to do, you know. I mean, it's, we kind of fill it out for each other, you know, because a lot of times I'm just bringing the music into the studio, 
and they're interpreting it how they are, and I accept that, and, and I trust them, you know, and I know where our strengths are and what, you know, everyone is capable of doing, and uh, that I just roll with that. I don't try to pretend, man. I don't play nothing that's, I play stuff that everybody can sound good on, you know, that's my motto. Because, you, know? you know, Rudy is definitely now in the last, this last decade, he's really coming into his own. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a great music. He has a great band himself, you know. He's a great, and they, they're both, Greg and Rudy, man, they're, they're, they're great composers, um, great thinkers. I mean, our conversations are amazing. Sometimes I wish I could record that, you know. It gets political, it gets funny, it gets all these different things, and everyone is a different character within the crew. And, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be playing with them, man. They, they've, they've taught me so much, and I'm grateful for that, you know. That'll do it again for another edition of The Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting from the Zinc Bar here in New York City as part of the Vandal Jam, as part of Vandal Jam Instruments. I'd like to personally thank the talented J.D. Allen for his time. Please make sure you go out and support his brand new CD, Americana, which is on the Savant Records imprint. You can buy it on Amazon.com as well as iTunes. I'd like to personally thank the staff and management here at the Dynamic Zinc Bar for their warm hospitality, as well as the staff and management at Van Doren Instruments. As always, please visit my website, www.thepaceyoutput.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.